Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Wacky Rig. The Wacky Rig is one of the best bass fishing lures probably of all time. Um, it's one of my favorites up here in the Northeast. It catches fish under any conditions. Anytime I need a bite, I know I can pull this guy out and catch some fish. Uh, it works around almost any type of cover, and also northern fish just really can't resist this bait. Whether you're dock fishing, fishing some grass, you get around smallmouth or largemouth that are sitting up there shallow on these northern natural lakes, it's really hard for them to resist this bait, as in anywhere in the country. Um, so it's something that I've fished many, many times over the years. I've learned a lot about it, I've experimented with it in a lot of different ways, and I've learned a lot of tricks over the years. So today we're going to break down a bunch of stuff that every fisherman should know about the wacky rig rod reel line setup different tricks you should know about how to rig it up bait selection color selection um, different terminal tackle components to help you catch more fish we're going to cover it all in today's video so stay tuned and let's get right into it all right so the first thing we're going to break down is your rod reel and line setup um, with a wacky rig, you can pretty much fish this on any spinning rod that you already own. Um, I used to fish mine on a seven foot medium fast action spinning rod. That was like my go-to. And if I had one choice for it today, I'd still be using that rod. Like it's a very straightforward rod. You can use it on anything. I could go drop shot fish with it for Lake Erie smallmouth. And then I can go skip a wacky rig under a dock for a four pounder or, and get it out of uh, some cover. So it's all stuff that you can do across the, the different rods. Rods, but if you're very into wacky rig fishing, you fish a lot of docks, you fish a lot of heavy cover with it. Um, I even fish the wacky rig down in Florida when I go down there and I catch big fish doing that. I would highly recommend taking a look at a rod like this. Doesn't have to be this exact one, but this is the Cashin Icon spinning rod. This is the seven foot two fast, medium, heavy power spinning rod. So it has two extra inches in the tip. Honestly, that doesn't do anything. Um, it, it, it could be seven foot long, it would do the same thing. Uh, it's still very accurate when casting. You can skip under docks really well. The biggest thing for me is that medium heavy backbone. Um, and this rod doesn't feel like a medium heavy in your hands. A lot of medium heavy spinning rods, when you pick them up, they feel like broomsticks and they're very hard to like work around with finesse baits. This one doesn't feel that way. It's very light in the hand. It works excellent. I like the way the grip is designed. It's very balanced, fits right where you want it to be. Uh, but that backbone really allows me to get some fish out of that cover. And it helps me get a good hook set when we talk about the hook here. Um, I, some of the biggest things with a wacky rig mistake wise is losing fish because of the hook set or more importantly, the actual hook you're using. So if you get the correct hook and you get the backbone there, you're gonna land a lot more fish. Um, it's all in trying to get that hook behind their jawbone. That's like the biggest thing. If you give yourself enough hook gap and hook length to get hooked behind a big fish's mouth, very rarely will you actually lose a fish on a wacky rig. It's a very high land percentage bait. Um, so I very much enjoy fishing this rod right here. Um, and then I pair it up with a Shimano Sedona 2500. I put 15 pound test lime green braid on here. That's super important, um, be, especially when fishing a wacky rig. That's my number one trick right there. If you're not gonna do anything else, try some lime green braid on your wacky rig and see how many more fish you catch. On a windy day, most likely I'm not gonna be fishing a wacky rig anyway, but on a windy day, it's not gonna do anything for you. But on those calm days where it's very sunny, very flat, those fish don't wanna eat and you're finessing them in with that wacky rig, you take that lime green braid and you throw that bait next to a piece of cover, you can watch your line slowly going out as that bait's shimmying down to the bottom. You could see if that line jumps because a fish came over and, and picked it up and took that bait. You can see if your line goes right or left because a fish grabbed that and was swimming with the bait. Um, and you can just see overall how, what your bait's doing. You can tell when it makes it to the bottom so you can make your uh, bait do a little bit of action and try and entice one into biting. Overall, it's just used as like a strike indicator and will help you catch more fish because you can understand what your bait's doing down there on the bottom. And then most importantly with the braid, it allows you to tie a leader on there. So I can do a eight pound test leader for all around wacky rig fishing, or I can go up to 10 or even 12 pound test if I need extra abrasion resistance or I'm fishing for big fish down in Florida. When I go down there, I'll tie a 10 or 12 pound leader on here and skip it under docks because I can hook a 10 pound fish under that dock. Uh, more likely than not, you're gonna be in a, a predicament anyway if you hook a fish like that. Uh, but at least if you have 12 pound over eight pound, you have a much better chance of getting that fish out of there. So that's very important of being able to change your line on the fly. That's why I like this setup right here. 
but if you only have a seven foot medium, that'll do just fine. Just make sure you have some braid on there and it'll help you catch more fish right off the bat. The rod, nice to have. The braid, I feel it's a must have when you're wacky rig fishing. All right, and then taking a look at some terminal tackle components that I like to have. The number one that I like to have is the VMC crossover ring. I used to use O-rings for years, and while they work, the VMC crossover ring is going to save you more money. Either one will work just fine. It'll act as a hook keeper for your bait, uh, but the VMC crossover ring is a wider band, and what that does is create less uh, tension right where that o-ring is so if you have a very thin o-ring and you pull on it it's going to pull all that tension right on that exact spot and it's very easy for that to rip a straight line through your bait where if you have this wider band it's very it's a little bit harder for that bait to rip right through because it's more supported across the bait um, so I like fishing those also in the fact that I can switch this to a Nico rig on the fly, which I just did a video about that recently. Uh, but I just feel it holds my hook in the right place. It doesn't get all tangled up. Your bait can actually, you sit, fall how it needs to. Your bait, your hook is perpendicular to your bait. So you get a better hook up. Everything you're looking for in a wacky rig. That's what I really like to use. My go-to size is a six millimeter for pretty much all Senkos. Um, but you can play around. Some might be thinner, some might be a little bit thicker. So somewhere in that five to seven range is what you're looking for on the size for those VMC crossover rings. And then hook selection for me, there's truthfully only one. I used to use those wacky hooks that are like the octopus shape that are very short hook length, but have a wide gap. Um, I just feel that I lose too many fish on those. What happens is, uh, especially if you have a weed guard, it doesn't press down far enough to actually get the hook far enough behind the fish's jawbone and you end up losing fish. So I started using the VMC Nico uh, hooks, the weedless ones. They have a very long hook shank, but the same width as your regular wacky hook. Um, and it just gets farther back in that fish's mouth. It's easier to get those fish hooked up and into the boat. Um, I, I noticed that I started landing a lot more fish as soon as I switched to this hook right here. Um, I also like it because I can trim the weed guards off if I need to and have an open hook, but nine times out of 10, these fluorocarbon weed guards are so soft. I prefer to just have that on there, even if I'm fishing around very light cover because they get out of the way so easily. I just stabbed myself with that. That's how easy they get out of the way. Uh, they get out of the way so easily that you can just get a good hook set on this fish and get them into the boat. So that's my number one hook selection that I like to use right there. But one little tr trick right here that I do like to use, whether I want my bait to fall faster down to the bottom or if I'm fishing a Senko that doesn't have the salt content that it needs, which we're gonna talk about here in just a second, I will get these VMC weedless jig heads that are meant for wacky rig fishing. So this is a 16th ounce. They also come in a 1 8 ounce. They come in a variety of different sizes, but just that little 1 16th ounce weight, if you were to put a nail weight in the head or the tail, it's gonna alter the way that your bait falls. It's not gonna have that shimmy, but if you have that weight right on the middle of the bait, it's still gonna shimmy like a regular Senko would on a wacky rig, uh, but you can fish a variety of different Senkos now because it'll get your bait down to the bottom a little bit faster and cause that shimmy. So a 16th might be all you need, um, but sometimes that little extra weight will get it to the bottom faster and how you need it to fall. Or if you're trying to search for fish with a wacky rig a little bit faster, you know they don't wanna eat other baits, but you can't sit there all day and let a weightless wacky rig fall. You can throw a 16th or an eighth ounce weight on there, let it fall quickly under that dock and search for those fish and still get that right action and presentation. Um, if you'd wanna see a more in-depth video about fishing this jig head, let me know. We can do it this spring when we're out there wacky rig fishing. I'll show you how I put this to work and catch some fish doing that. But for now, last thing we gotta talk about is bait and color selection. So I have a whole pile of baits over here. Um, I fish the Sixth Sense Clout. I am, I do work with Sixth Sense. So if you're interested in getting any of these Sixth Sense products or any products from the video, they'll all be linked in the description below. You can use my code Quince. You'll save 10% off your order and you'll be helping me out a ton to continue making videos like this. Uh, the reason I do like the Sixth Sense Clout, I am very particular with my Senko. So if I, if I did not like these, I'd be honest with you. Uh, they have the salt content that you need to get that shimmy. They're very flexible. They have the salt content. They have enough weight to actually fall quickly in the water. I've done a couple videos talking about um, weightless Senko fishing and wacky rig fishing. And I always mention that yum dingers aren't really my favorite because they don't catch as many fish because they don't fall as fast. Um, I, I've seen all your comments about it on how people catch fish on dingers all the time. 
I trust me, you can catch fish on a dinger. I'm not saying that you won't catch fish on a young dinger. It catches fish, big bite bait, stick worms, it'll catch fish. Um, I've done bait videos in the past where I literally put all the Senkas in a head-to-head -head test, and I think we're actually gonna do that this year. I'm gonna fish every single Senka variety I can on a wacky rig, and we're gonna see what catches the most fish, um, just because I'm curious, and I think that would be a really good video. Uh, but the dingers do not have the same salt content as like a Gary Yamamoto Senko, a Bass Pro Sticko, the Six Sense Clout. Um, I can't think of all of it, even the Guggen Baits Lunker Log. I fished that one. That one has the salt content that you need. You need that bait to have enough weight to actually fall quickly in the water and get that shimmy to draw those fish in. Um, or else you're just throwing that bait out there and it's almost like suspending on the surface and it doesn't have enough action to draw those fish in, not what those fish are looking for. Not saying you can't catch fish on them. I've caught fish on them numerous times, even on a dinger. I used to fish them back when I was eight, 10 years old, because that's all I could afford. And if that's all you can afford, that's great. You can fish that, still catch fish. That's where I would take this VMC weighted jig head and put that 16th ounce jig head on there and you can still get that shimmy action because you're adding the weight to the bait. Um, so there's ways around doing that, but if I'm picking one out for myself, it's gonna be a Gary Yamamoto, it's gonna be a Sticko, it's gonna be the Sixth Sense Clout, it's gonna be baits like those that have that shimmy and that salt content to them. That's what gets you the most amount of bites in a wacky rig, um, so that's what I'm looking for. Not saying none of the other baits will work at all, they'll work, just have a difference in how many fish you'll catch sometimes. There's other times, I guarantee you that a dinger will catch more fish than this bait right here, because the fish don't want it to fall very fast. They might want it suspended up there. So sometimes you just have to play around with it and figure out what the fish want. But overall, nine times out of 10, if I'm picking a bait, that's how I'm gonna select my wacky rig bait. And then colors, I have a million of them right here. It really depends on what you're fishing. Up here in the Northeast, the only time I'll fish something strange would be like a black and blue if the water's a little bit dirty. Um, or sometimes our northern fish really just like black and blue and clear water. I don't know why they do that, but sometimes it works. Other than that, it's going to be a lot of green pumpkins and watermelon reds. So I got like dark melon red here, green pumpkin burst if I want some flash, regular green pumpkin if I'm just fishing uh, a normal wacky rig. If I'm picking something just to go fish, I'm going to pick green pumpkin usually. Nirvana is a great one and black and blue are great ones as that water gets a little bit more dirty and you need some contrast in your bait. Um, but that's about it. If you want to see another video breaking down the wacky rig even more, check this one right here. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Hit the subscribe button if you did, and thanks for watching.